The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a quick look here at this uh, German Bund on the long-term weekly chart. Um, as you can see here, we've had a pretty strong move down two weeks. Uh, we've had a pretty strong week down, move down in our notes and bonds also the last couple of weeks. Uh, the open interest was certainly not telling it wanted to go a lot higher. We had some very good news from the uh, Federal Reserve uh, that the rates were going to be uh, low, maybe forever, but this market has not re reacted very well. Today will be a key day for the Treasury bond folks because we've been rallying five days and have given, uh, have taken very little of that move down back. If we get above that 162.15 level in December, uh, that would mean something, but the open interest is telling us that the boys are not playing there anymore, so they found a new sandbox. That's what it looks like anyway. We'll pay attention to it as we look through these charts uh, each day. We'll try to find the ones that look uh, the most interesting. Now, uh, we're going to uh, move on, and we're going to take a look at the next one we're going to look at is the uh, the FTSE. That's had a really strong move. Looks like the little mini Trump, Mr. Boris Johnson, has got his, uh, his act together, and maybe he's going to keep it together. I don't know, but we've had a beautiful uh, butterfly pattern down there. You can see it was was also a perfect ABCD pattern from September 16th, and from there it's rallied from 72.85, 73.56. In fact, it's just made, uh, just went above the 78% level just a minute ago. So this is acting, uh, you know, very nice. This trades very nicely, folks. But frankly, it doesn't. It's not a good thing to trade because most of the stocks in the FTSE are German related or other European. There's not many London stocks involved in that, so that's why it's not used very much. I bring it up because it's related to the British pound. And as you know, we've been very, very bullish, the British pound. And we're back to that 125 level. And I still think we have a chance to make 128. But, uh, you know, remember, 11960, nobody wanted it except a few people that looked at geometry stuff, and that turned out to, to be okay. So we'll see whether that's going to mean very much, you know, down the road. So that's uh, the FTSE. Let's take a look at the next one we're going to look at is the German DAX. We'll get this up here because we had a little bit of a sell-off this morning. It's since, uh, hold on one second, it's since it's come back, and, our, and I believe it was testing those highs again, as I, I recall, the uh, 12,450 is a very important level because that's a 78% retracement of the last three days range. So I would watch that uh, also uh, very, very closely. Now, one of the things that people have asked me is, you know, I've been around this thing for a long time, doing a whole bunch of stuff. And over the years, it's been 60 years, folks, seen a lot of things. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing is putting together about a 90 minute to two hour webinar uh, for TFNN. Uh, we need to, you know, get some people in here to help support TFNN because they, Tommy O'Brien and the boys do a great, a great, uh, you know, a great job. So uh, that's great. Thanks, Bob, for letting me know that. I thought it might be Bob Alexander, my old buddy from uh, Las Vegas, but thank you for letting me know your last name. But I'm thinking of putting together this webinar, showing you the things that I learned from my friend in the UK, plus all the other things that I have learned through the years and put them in a way that you could maybe understand it just a little bit better and then also go over the current charts that look really good, folks, because we've got some really big things happening here uh, in these next few weeks that I think are going to be life-changing for some people. But, you know, heck, I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot, but that's the way it looks, you know, for me from the cheap seats. But it's going to have a lot of material. I'm going to put the stuff in from the London seminar. Uh, a lot of you folks have seen it, but some of you haven't because I've not uh, I've not uh, published this before. Uh, I, I made a small inference in the book. Uh, uh, um 
trade what you see, but it was so small that I had to go and search it myself, and I barely recognized that I even mentioned it. But remember, I did that 135 pattern in my first book, the, the Trader's Viewpoint, and no one paid any attention to that for many, many years. And that's also a very important uh, pattern to look at. So that's one of the things I'm uh, thinking of doing. Now, uh, Rich Anderson was kind enough to send us uh, this uh, chart from uh, the, the Gartman letter, and I wanted to bring this to your attention because we are um <laughs> Maria, I can't remember what page of the book it is. It's at the back of the book. Uh, start at the back and work forward. <laughs> Very good, Maria. I don't remember which page of the, page of the book it was. Uh, anyway, uh, it was all related to that stuff that I've been looking at. Uh, with uh, D David Paul and Tom Hugard. Let's take a look at this fear and greed index from the Dennis Gartman, the Gartman letter. You can see we're now into the greed area. Not extreme greed, but we are into the greed area. Uh, the small caps have certainly picked up. Ditto, ditto, ditto. Um, and certainly, uh, uh, you know, increased quite a bit. Uh, the banking stocks have, have moved quite a bit with the interest rate stuff. But, folks, there's something wrong in this uh, this thing with the Federal Reserve. If you'll remember back in October of 2007, Bernard, Bernard Bernanke gave a green light that everything was fine. He could see nothing on the horizon that would cause any problems. And he was the president of the Federal Reserve, the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. And if that dude can't see something wrong, maybe he he was giving some misinformation. I don't know. But let's let's just look to see where we were here on a relative basis, okay? Let's just get this up here to take a quick look. This comes from uh, Macro Trends. I'll get this up here so we can look at it really closely here. And uh, uh, Gartman isn't bearish. No, he's not. Uh, anyway, here is the S&P uh, going back to 2000. You can see the dot-com bubble and the 80% uh, drop that we had. Then we had the mortgage fraud housing bubble back in 2007, the 80% drop. But look where we are now, folks. We're up a little bit higher, aren't we? We're, we're about 4.5, 4.4 times higher than we were in 09. Folks, look at those little, you see the little red arrows? They're not little arrows, they're big arrows. Look at those arrows. You see those three drive patterns? that are there. You see the one in 2000, you see the one in 2005, and you see the really clear one right here. This is the granddaddy of them all up in here. I think it means something. Now, remember, I'm a technician. I don't follow the news. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, about the closest thing I get to the news is watching to see how the Cubs did, and then we'll see if that's it. Maria, my dear, if we hit 3075, this will be my last show. I can tell you that right now. In 3075, I am gone. Going back to the 200-day and 400-day moving average, the most it could possibly do would be 3042, and that would mean if Trump resigned and uh, 3042. No, no, 3042. That's all there is to it. Let me show you why. Oh, we got the break coming up. You come back. I'm going to show you why from my friend in uh, in uh, the UK. I asked him for permission to show that, and I'm going to. A lot of you think it's a bunch of baloney, but uh, this old cowboy doesn't think so. So I'm going to give you a chance to take a look at uh, a glimpse of excellence in my opinion. Of course, it's my opinion. That don't mean very much, but we're going to be looking at some of these things here in a minute. I will share that. And we'll have Tom or a uh, Stan Harley tomorrow. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at the stock market going back uh, 2016. I'd like for you to look at the top there. This, this is the weekly, December 5th, 2016. As you can see, all these Fibonacci spirals that are there, they probably won't mean much to you, but basically, it's how the market expands by 1.618. The key to system that he uses is where he starts because he's found where the vibration is and he follows it through. This is a dynamic, folks, a dynamics model. This is not a static model. It moves with the market so if the market starts to move that spiral will move to the next level that's what I'm going to try to point to you what we're looking at um, as we walk through this remember that remember the date of December the 5th 2016 because what we want to do is we want to say that uh, to go back to see if there's some some type of time relationship here and that's uh, you know one of the things that we really really want to look forward to and if I'm smart enough I can find a doggone thing just a second I know I did it because I was preparing this for uh, last night and I shut the front door and raise her in. I got it right here in the front. It's got to be right here. So, ah, I think it's right there. Uh, no, that's the January one. Hold on. Let me get the other one. It's got to be right here somewhere. It's got to be in this group right here. It's got to be right here. It's not that one. It's not that. I think this is it. Nope, that's not it. Uh, bear with me, folks. Give me a humor me for just a little bit here. And there we go. Now I got it. Let's get it up here. Now, this will be a weekly chart. Oh, dear. This doggone thing. There we go. Hold on. I'm almost ready, so bear with me. So there's what we are. The Sarah said the same thing, Jay Bird. She says, you got to love the number, 91919. Today was my mother's birthday. Uh, the little joy of my life died at the age of 48. 
But anyway, let's look at this. You see the December 5th level there? Um, that that it was the key date of that spiral that he was looking at. As you can see here, uh, we, we went down for about two weeks and then we took off. But the one I want to show you, I, I'm not, he does, does not want me to show you the one that we have today or this week because uh, he doesn't want to influence uh, anything that you're looking at. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to uh, a, 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 a earlier time. We're going to go back to January of uh, remember, folks, this is uh, this is way over the heads of most of us, including the guy that's talking on this show right now. I mean, this is so far above my pay grade that I, I don't even like to uh, mention it, but I'm learning about it, and that's the key. Uh, this is the same type of a spiral as you can see here. These spirals go up, and what he's looking at, the target to go short was 28.55 to 28.50. You'll see the date, January 24, 2018. That's what we want to be looking for. So what we're going to do now is just to see if the old uh, if the fellow was correct and what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and take a quick look at this and I think we'll be able to get up here and you'll be able to see this same chart we'll get it up here you'll be able to see there was January the 14th of uh, 2018 that was the high of the market at 286 and he said 286 2855 and it went from there all the way down to 2526 Okay, now the thing that we have going on right now, and I, I'm going to explain to you why I've spent so much time over there and learning about it and what I did wrong and what I tried to figure out what I did wrong, and this was it. I'm going to bring this up here to show you, and this might mean nothing at all. It might mean something. I really don't know. But the problem with this was you'll notice we have this one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle. The, the, the importance here is we are 10 months from one to three and three to five. We also on from swing two to three is one point is point six one eight of swing four to five. That means four to five is one point six one eight of the one to two to three. Now if you look at the two months back in July, that's where I thought the top was. And it did. It dropped a lot. It it dropped uh, well over <clears throat> 40 handles, uh, but then it came right back and made a new high by 20 cents last Friday. Now, if that's, <clears throat> sorry, folks, if that's the case, then this is the difference of what we're looking at right here. I'd like to show you the spirals, but he asked me not to do that, so I'm not going to, but that's what we're looking at here. Whether it means anything or not, I don't know. It's very es esoteric, but frankly, it has some... Um, means something to me because it's all related to Fibonacci and it's all related to the astro part of it too. So that's the main thing of what we're looking at as we walk through uh, some of these here this morning. Now, the other market that is in very, very uh, serious problems. In fact, today, if the treasury bonds cannot rally much above 162 and then turn lower, oh my goodness, there's a huge problem in the bond market, folks. They got those people trapped and I, uh, you know, it's so, the news is so different from what's going on in the bond market that, uh, you know, people don't even mention it. I mean, we've had a, we've had a really, really drop in, in bonds. You know, they've dropped, what, $9,000 or something? And uh, what have they been able to rally back, uh, 2500 or something? I mean, this is not a, this is not a sign of something, uh, you know, very, very bullish. So we, we need to, to pay uh, close attention to that. So uh, remind yourself that, uh, you know, these markets are, they follow the news, and so um, something is wrong. All I can tell you is when they talk about negative interest rates, that is total baloney. This morning, real early, they had a guy a, a fish, a named Fisher from Dartmouth, that uh, Amos Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth University up in New Hampshire, and he he basically said he couldn't understand, uh, you know, and he used to run Black Rocks. Uh, 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 mortgage, uh, not mortgage, but the interest rate section. So uh, he said he couldn't understand negative interest rates. If you find somebody that will, will give you their money and pay you to give you their money, then please let me know. I'd like to know someone out there that will do it. I know the countries can do it because they're governments. They have no skin in the game. That's all baloney. But this is different, folks. I mean, this is, um, this is the... the, the what, Never mind. Uh, this is the Ponzi scheme, a Ponzi scheme. Well, let's change the direction of the room here. We gotta, we gotta make some salutations here, folks. We've had a couple of guys here. Uh, we have a. This is the uh, long-term 
Uh, long-term timer digest you'll notice here. Number one, Kerry Szymanski of Tucson, Arizona, my good friend. You'll notice he's right there. Look at Steve Rhodes. He's right there. Look at Tim Bost. He's right there. Shut the front door. And look at there's Larry Pet. Oh, wait a minute. No, he's not there. Anyway, uh, I quit doing that stuff many years ago. So anyway, the two of those guys uh, are uh, my very good friends and students. And of course, Tim Bost is one of our regulars at Financial Cycles Weekly. So uh, it's a good kudos to all those guys to take the effort to do that because they're up against a lot of big competition, and to do that is uh, is really good. So let's keep a uh, you know keep our hands clapping uh, for one hand clapping anyway. So we'll watch that of what what we're watching here. Any questions that you might have, 877-927-6648. I will be happy to, to answer them if I can. We've had requests over the night to take a look at one of the markets that we almost, well, we do never trade it because it's rather... Um, rather thin. It means a lot to me because I got to meet the Beach Boys because of feeder cattle. We went out to uh, South Dakota, uh, Bismarck, to uh, buy a uh, cattle feeding operation for them back in 1988. And we got to ride in their Gulf Stream, and um, it was really great. I got to meet uh, Bruce Johnson and Mike Love, and uh, those are the only two that I met out of the group. But uh, and we still, I still know Bruce Johnson. I don't hear from much. Bruce Johnson and Mike Love live live in the same area, in in uh, Santa Barbara, California. They live right there on Sheffield Drive, as you go down one, I go up 101. Anyway, I will, we'll discuss the feeder cattle when we get back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we had a request to take a look at feeder cattle, the first one since I've been on the air here, and that's been over 10 years. Uh, if you'll notice, if you go back to June, July, and August of last year, you can see a three drive to a top pattern completes at the ratio of 1.59. Now, the difference between 1.59 and 1.618 for trading purposes is basically insignificant. So that three drive pattern ended up there. From there, you can see you started an A, B, C, D move from uh, September into January and then up and then down into August. Now, those of you that want to take this a little bit farther and try to prove that maybe some of these things actually do work is why don't you take a look at the time between September and March and between April and August and see if there's any similarities in time and price. As you notice, when you get down to the bottom, you can see a very, very symmetrical 33-day cycle that bottoms right at the third drive absolutely perfect but if you look at the second drive that comes in at when it's down 13 handles you'll notice that it's at a 1.25 1.25 level but there's a three drive pattern there and from there the rally, the market rallies 13 handles you know folks that's five thousand dollars in feeder cattle and it hasn't made a bottom yet and then it comes down and makes the final bottom at the third drive down there at 128 and you can see now that we're in a downtrend and we should have some very strong resistance up here at the 141 level. That's what it looks like here in feeder cattle. I haven't traded feeder cattle in over 40 years, and I don't plan on doing it now. But since someone asked me to take a look at the chart, I thought that I would. And it's absolutely a perfectly technical chart. And it really gives you an idea of what's happening in the cattle market. So it's in a strong downtrend. The only thing that would train, the turn this market would be a move above the 150 level. And then you'd have a pretty good chance of seeing some a really substantial moves. But these swings that we have in feeder cattle are really, uh, you know, they're very, very pronounced. Now, we also had a, uh, a request to take a look at the, uh, the coffee market. And I thought the best way to do that would be to look at it on a very long-term view, which we're going to be, uh, I know, Ruby, you're knocking them dead in the hogs, and God bless you, the sound of one hand clapping for you. Great job there. Uh, you had a really nice, uh, you know, triple bottom down there, and it's had one heck of a move, about seven cents, which is, uh, you know, quite a bit of money there. So, members, you take care of the poor now, Ruby. You got to take care of the poor. Okay, let's take a look here uh, at the uh, long term chart here in the coffee. This is a monthly chart. Uh, we're in that area of the 78% level from going back to 2001. As you can see, we've had some pretty good bounces up and down in here, but the really uh, that ABCD pattern has not completed, folks. If you're looking at that, uh, when we had that last 382 up at that 172, that would take you all the way down to $40. And we've been there before in 2001. One. So if things get really bad in a coffee market, you could certainly uh, certainly uh, you could certainly do that. So we'll see if that's going uh, if that's going to be the case. So we'll be watching these here. We're opening this morning with a good nice nice bit of gusto. And we'll see how these markets end up here today as we uh, as we go through uh, this morning. OK, now we got stocks up pretty good this morning. That's what we'd like to see on the opening. Get the boys in there to play the game. Uh, we got gold up a few bucks uh, stopping right at the 61% ABCD up there at 1510 that should hold 
the gold for a bit. And uh, we've got the bond still trying to, to make a little bit of a rally here from that 59 and change. Has only been able to just barely make uh, a point and a half, folks. <laughs> that, 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 that is the definition of a dead cat. Well, no, actually, it's been more than that because the low was way down there at 58. So they've been able to uh, rally about three points, which is uh, a still a definition of a dead cat bounce in the bond. So we'll uh, basically uh, keep an eye on that. So now we want to get back to the uh, want to get back to take a look at the coffee here. So we'll be able to see here and uh, remember what I said, uh, uh, Maria. Thirty seventy five is sayonara. That's a goodbye in Japanese. Bio con Dios is goodbye in Spanish, and thirty seventy five is goodbye. Billy Ray Valentine. All right, let's take a look here now at the. Uh, Let's get up here to take a quick look at this coffee here. Another market that's in big trouble is the crude oil market, folks. That market is definitely under some pressure. But here's the important part of the coffee chart that we want to look at. Here's where we are. Uh, here's where we are right here. And we'll be able to see here um, that uh, we're, we're right out of 382 retracement. I believe we're down a little bit. It's important that the coffee stays above 99 cents a pound or $99 a pound. It's 99 cents. $99, 100, 100 whatever it is. Uh, it's got to stay above 99 because if it doesn't stay above 99, you're, you're looking at 97 and a half, and that's the 618. But we've been here for five weeks, folks. Uh, so that's really strong support in the coffee. So if you can hold nine, if you can hold that level of 99 and then turn up, that's a very, very bullish chart. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, you know, I don't know, but that's what it looks like, you know, early this morning. So we'll see if that's going to be if that's going to be the uh, case. We'll watch it uh, as we look through some of these other charts that we will look at. So that's the coffee market. We've had a uh, another request. Hold on one second here. And uh, we want to take one other one here to take a look at. And that was in the uh, shucks. Here it is right here. I wanted to uh, show you why these bonds look so bad, folks. Uh, we'll get this up here because the open interest was dropping all during that time. This is the bond chart. Uh, over since August, you can see we had the uh, uh, that big top up there, the three drive pattern. It was exactly 44 days. Open interest was dropping. The last day was that day when everybody went gaga, when the, that yield curve went nuts. And then we dropped from 167 all the way. We dropped 10 handles, and we've been able, we've been able to rally back uh, two and a half handles. Uh, yeah, two and a half, well, almost three handles. So uh, it's uh, this is not a very not a very bullish chart, folks. That's all I can say is, but everybody wants to buy stocks, so that's what they should be buying is buy those stocks because they look pretty good. I guess these patterns that I'm looking at for the longer term are making no good. You know what I say? Eh, we'll see what happens. Still a little bit early in the old game here. Okay, let's move on to the next one that someone asked about, and that was the L the Bitcoin. Uh, let's get Bitcoin up here and take a look at it here. This is uh, Bitcoin on a four-hour chart, and you'll be able to see here that uh, we're down here at this uh, uh, very important 9,700 level in Bitcoin. It must hold that because if it doesn't, you're going to be looking somewhere below 9,000 uh, in the Bitcoin. This is a, you know, this thing's traded on a bunch of different exchanges that don't mean very much. But uh, if you're in it, which I've never been in it, uh, it does follow the patterns quite nicely. You can, you can just test it yourself and just, you know, like Twentyman says, divide, uh, divide the. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, defy human nature, do the work yourself. So that's what we're paying attention to here today. Okay, let's move on here and uh, take another look at, I think there was two charts for Bitcoin here that we had to cover. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I thought I had the second one here, but evidently, I yes, I do. Here's the second one right here. This was the one that was preceding this. Now what we've done is, we'll get this up here. This was the one before. And now we've completed that pattern down there at that 92 level. So anything below that, and it's in big trouble, uh, Bitcoin. So we'll see, and we'll be able to see if that's going to be the case. So that's what we're watching here. So 877-927-6648.
If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000, the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, our good friend Marshall from the state of Washington has asked us to review what uh, Bill Meridian had to say over the weekend on Sunday. He sent out this little blurb to his uh, subscribers, and it says, Dear Investors, Monday, the 16th of September, is a the PPT is a uh, pivot point area. The market has been rising, so one can expect a pullback. The index is up against its old highs of July 26th, the all-time high. I do not think the market is unlikely to make a new low, but let's look at the seasonals, he said. Over the last 30 years, the index has been down 23 times from the 16th to the 25th of, October, of September. From 1980, which is 37 years ago, 39 years ago, the index has fallen 67% of the time from the 16th through the 30th. So we're looking at two weeks here of some negativity. You can't tell it from this morning, but by golly, that's what they're saying. From 1980, 39 years ago, the index has declined 70% of the time from the 20th through the 28th of September. In fact, the 17th has only been up 35% of the time. And the, the, the 17th was actually a down day. We closed slightly lower. Even though we opened 200 lower on Monday, the, uh, it was still lower than it was uh, on the 16th. From, night, from 1885, that was the year that we had the, the gunfight at the OK Corral here in Tombstone, Arizona, with Wyatt Earp and uh, what was the other dude's name? Uh, Bat Masterson against the Clantons. From 1885, the Dow Jones has declined 55% of the time from the 18th of September to October 1st. So there's some negativity in here, but remember, these are probabilities, and that's all it is. Doc Holliday, yep, 
Doc Holliday. It wasn't Bat Masterson. It was Doc Holliday. Thank you, David. <laughs> and believe me, I love I love Western lore. Boy, I tell you, I'm I'm really big into that kind of stuff. So that's interesting to look at. We'll see what happens here. We'll take a quick look at these things as we go through today. But today, based on the theory of uh, uh, data. Uh, Dependency, it has a high probability, better than 80%, to close lower today. I know you think that's hard to believe with the market up so strongly, but the, the odds say that there's a high probability of doing that. I'm also uh, trying to get John Jameson to do uh, a nice uh, some some uh, work here uh, for TFNN and show him some of the stuff that we're doing. He's got some wonderful things to look at, so hopefully we'll get John over there uh, in the UK to uh, give us some really fun information. So we'll see. Uh, what's going to happen uh, with these things. So that's pretty much what we're watching here this morning. Hey, we've got a couple things that people have asked me about the soybeans. Folks, the soybeans have a really interesting pattern here. I, I will show you. This is the one from uh, from last night. This was this is a short-term pattern, of course, if you like to trade, uh, you know, the soybean oil. But let's get this up here because this is another one of those uh, shorter-term patterns that works pretty good. There's the 135 pattern, as you can see, that is formed over over the 17th, but this is a half hour chart. Each of these swings is a couple hundred dollars, so they are tradable. But the key here is you went up and you hit that 382 and you went down and you you went all the way down to the, the 1.27 at 2976. Uh, that was a um, $300 move to the downside. Now it's important that the oil stays above 2950 because if it can stay above 2950, it's got a really good chance. I don't know what soybeans are doing today, but they have a uh, they have a bullish bias. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, can someone tell me what the beans are doing? Because I don't know. And uh, oh, wait a minute! I, no, I, I can't tell it by doing the show, so I have to wait. See, if you have any questions, oh, uh, they tell me here at TFNN all the lines are are totally swamped. But if you want to try, it's eight seven seven nine two seven six six. Four eight is what you want to try to do if you can get through here. But right now the lines are just totally jammed. Um, okay, we'll try to get through here with one of these folks that has a question here in just a little bit. The other one that looks, uh, I mentioned that the crude oil looks extremely bearish, folks. Uh, you know, we've given up uh, all of the gains from what we had on Sunday night and Monday. And uh, now, you know, we're, we're way below $59 uh, a barrel now. And we're heading towards probably 54 would be my guess where we started the week. So that's uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. No one knows what's happened over there. What they tell us and what they do is different. Yes, you're right, David. That's my favorite tombstone over there in uh, Tombstone, Arizona. By the you folks might not know this. Uh, those of you that have been out to visit me certainly do. But uh, Tombstone, Arizona was um, the, the really the largest city in the Western United States other than San Francisco. It was bigger than San. It was bigger than Los Angeles in 1885. But the, the the, um, the, the cemetery there, the Boot Hill Cemetery, is a national Jewish cemetery. And um, the, one of the one of my favorites, these are actual tombstones, folks. It says, here lies Lester Moore, four slugs from a 44, no less, no more. There's some other really funny ones. If you go on and Google, uh, you'll be able to see some of these. But they're, they're really, uh, you know, but this was the times when, uh, when it was all about the old Wild West. So we'll keep an eye on that as we go through here. Um, Someone made a comment about uh, Jim, if I know uh, Jim, um Kramer. Yes, I've met Jim and I met his wife. His wife was a, tr a trader for a hedge fund. She, Miriam, I think is her name. Incredibly bright woman. And Jim's a really nice guy. He, he's a little, he's a hyperactive as you know, And uh, but he's, he's really a nice guy. He's uh, he's very philanthropic and uh, he, he's not, he doesn't have a conceited bone in his uh, in his body. But <laughs> he, he really does. He's a really nice guy. I mean, I, I that, that's all I can say. <laughs> he doesn't make a number... <laughs> <laughs> David, that number doesn't mean anything on how, how number number of wives as he's had. That just means that he's got to, he just has a, a rough taste. I, I can well I <laughs> I could tell you a comment that Larry Williams made to me once in New York that has stuck in my mind forever, but I prefer not to uh, bring that uh, to your attention. Anyway, we'll we'll watch this as we go through and look at some of these other things that we're that we're looking at here uh, today. So, yes, he he is. Uh, well, you might not like him, but he is a nice guy. I mean, he's a little abrasive to some people, but um, he if you ever got to meet him and sat, and sat down and, and had a glass of wine with him or something, he's 
actually a pretty nice guy. But when you first look at him, I know, I know it's it, it really puts a lot of people. And it did me for many years until I met him. But uh, that's neither, you know, that's just personal things that doesn't really mean that's <laughs> okay anyway let's uh, take a look here at the silver market this is something that i really think is super 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 important let me get this up here and i didn't believe it until i saw it last night uh, mr z brought it to my attention here you'll notice here that i talked about the gap on the weekly chart the fact that we went up to that 78% level, we backed off $2 an ounce. Do you know, folks, that we came within one half of a cent of an ounce at 1747 and a half of filling that gap? We never really filled it, and it still hasn't been filled yet. This is an important gap. You know, that is, uh, it is really an amazing statistic. How could it not make a half a cent? That means there had there had to be an order setting there that nobody ever even wanted to try to fade. Maybe three, four, five hundred contracts. I don't know. But that that is an amazing event. Uh, we have to watch that because if silver starts to move higher and gold start to move higher, folks, this is nothing more than a big pullback. And remember, the open interest in the gold has been increasing all along. It's been decreasing in silver. That one looks bearish, but not the gold. Gold, even on the down moves, it's increasing. So the people are interested in playing in the gold market. I mean, we're having substantial increases, just like we are in the S&P 500. We're having substantial increases. So those are just some of the ones that we're, you know, paying attention to today. So 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're going to wind up the show here. Remember, tomorrow we're going to have our good friend uh, Stan Harley on the line, and I think uh, it'll be fun to uh, listen to what uh, Stan has to say. Uh, always uh, good fun. Uh, people have asked me uh, about, uh, you know, what I think about the commodity markets. I've talked about this in the 24-7 newsletter several times, and I think we've made a major bottom in most of these commodities, especially in the grains and the cattle and the hogs and uh, probably close to it in coffee. Uh, cocoa certainly made a bottom, um, uh, and coffee certainly trying to. Cotton is trying to do it, too, but we look like we're doing it. As far as the trade thing with China, folks, I think that's all. That's about as uh, about as interesting as the Cold War stuff, as far as I can tell. Every time they say something, they, they retract it. So, you know, I know it jumps whenever they say something, but I wouldn't trust anything that they say. But that's, <laughs> that's my two cents worth. I'm just very uh, skeptical all of it. Regarding the Hong Kong, uh, things are still bad over there. Uh, I, you know, they're, they're, they're still doing some, uh, you know, uh, bad things as far as uh, burning things and throwing things at the police, uh, Molotov cocktails and stuff. So we'll see uh, what's going in that. Okay. Um, Let's move on to uh, one other question that some had, someone had about the market, uh, and that was the platinum market. Platinum has actually held up better than the gold and silver. It had a high of $1,000, and we got down to, we dropped $100 an ounce, and uh, it's held relatively good support. But the key here is watch the silver, folks, at that 947, 1747 level. It held it relatively well. We still have outstanding targets in silver at 1680 and 1760, 1770. 75 in the gold. I still think we've got a chance at those. Those would be ABCDs on a weekly. Uh, get everybody bearish at the wrong time, and that I think would be the last train to Boot Hill over there in Tucson or in uh, Tombstone to try to buy the gold and the silver if we get down to those levels. That's the way it looks like uh, for me. I've covered those many times in the newsletters over the past several weeks. It still looks that direction that we're going. Uh, oil is going lower, bonds are going lower, and stocks. Got God only knows and she's not telling. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.